Warning, this podcast is a safe space for all individuals to freely express themselves in the sexiest way possible. Any information or advice provided comes from our own experiences and in no means should be taken as professional advice. We respect each individual and their experiences and have zero tolerance for any rude or unsolicited behaviour. Hi guys, welcome to Project Sweet Loud Untamed Tarts, or as we know it, Project Slut. 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 I'm a slut. Project Slut, the show that educates and entertains all things sex in an inclusive and positive way. Let's put power back into being a slut and fight back slut shaming with your host, Lavi. I'm very excited to talk to you and like get to know you a bit more and get to share your story with everyone. We met probably a few months ago. Yeah, so a while ago when we, well, when we were working at the same place, because for the first time in my life, I'd worked at an establishment and for the first time in your life, you'd I've worked, also worked at an establishment. in the sex industry, right? Yes, I did. I yeah. was a pimp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually said that ever on the podcast yet, but I did for a brief moment work as a pimp, I'd like to say. Yeah, so uh, Lavi was my pimp, sent help. Uh, <laughs> And because I'm not unopposed to doing full service, I was working at the same establishment as well. Yeah, lovely. so we met um, at, at the same establishment and I just thought you were such an interesting person. And I remember thinking, I am going to interview you one day. <laughs> I'm going to rail you with all these questions. One of the things I thought was, oh my God, she's a dom. This mm. is awesome. And then you just kept hitting me with all these other things about you. And I was like, oh my God, like, what is this woman? Yeah, well, like I... Um I mean, I am actually a listener of the show anyway, but in preparation for today, (laughs) I actually went through the backlog and listened through everything again. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Just every single episode, I was like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Because there's just... Okay, why don't we just list them, okay? okay. So, like, let's introduce yourself. So, you know, I just said to everyone how we met at an establishment, but who are you? Who is this person I'm currently talking to right now? Okay, so hello, my name is Mercy, um, also known as Mistress Mercy, and yes, that is Mercy, as in, please, have mercy. Uh, That is an intentional (laughs) joke, and almost every one of my sex work names has always been a pun. I am primarily a kink-based sex worker. Um, I'm also a disability advocate. I am a person with disabilities as well. That's one of the reasons I do this work, but the other reason, very fortuitously, is that I fucking love it. I am queer and I am non-binary and I am... No, no, no so, so, so we've got... Um, so queer, non-binary, queer, disabled. Non-binary, disabled, sex worker, kinkster. kinkster. And my joke is I'm a professional pervert, um, <laughs> but a lifestyle kinkster. You're definitely a person of many talents, many factors... I don't like the word labels, but mm. you've got a lot attached to you. Absolutely. And queer. Weirdo. Because then queerdo? I don't have to give the labels. <laughs> Social queerdo? Oh, oh, I'm a queer weirdo. But yeah, I'm a queerdo. There you queerdo. go. Love Condemns it. it even further. <laughs> Devoutly pro-slut, pro-weirdo. Oh, pro-slut exactly what we needed, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so before when you were getting ready um, and getting all your latex things we were talking a little bit about kinks Mm. and you said one of your labels were kinksters Mm -hmm. i wanted to talk about that first so can we a little bit of a rundown about what you mean by you're a bit of a kinkster do you mean in like your personal life your work life and what kind of kinks are you specifically talking about okay so um i am a kinkster both in my professional and my private life um so as a professional i lean more heavily dominant i do offer i call it pro switching because i will never exclusively be a sub but if you're willing to let me fuck you i am willing to let you fuck me is the deal and same thing if i can smack you around then i'm open to also being smacked around that's (laughs) that's where i can have my fun but i am, am capable of being exclusively a top in my private life i'm way more egalitarian in that like i said ultimate fence sitter i love to just switch up that dynamic and have it be almost as fluid as possible you know if I can halfway through choking someone out have them grab me by the throat and turn me over that's my happy place ah love a good happy place right yes (laughs) so that's probably the primary difference between my work and private experiences is I just don't enjoy it as like I love controlling the variables professionally it's quite interesting because in you know my brief kind of dabble into being a pimp Mm. And from my from, from from what I know, I have never actually come across 
a worker who is a professional sub? They exist. It's dangerous. It is dangerous because so, I, from what I know that you are submissives, gi- submissives give power to the yeah, dominant. So um, I actually have and do work with professional submissives. And the reason why, so you probably won't see them advertised, is they will be advertising usually as full service workers who, if they are comfortable enough with the client, will offer pro sub services. In my situation, I've worked with pro subs because I will literally be in the room. And my sole job, a third person yeah. who happens to be very hot, sitting <laughs> in the corner, who yell at a man for you. And like, that's you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the reason why, you know, you don't sub professionally mm. Um, and you dabble in it a little bit in your personal life if that's the situation arises. Mm. Let's go to your dom work then. Okay. I want to know everything. <laughs> tell me. Tell me it all. I want to know. Um, I think I'm quite lucky in that it is something that comes quite naturally to me. Being dominant, do you mean? Yes. Um, so it's something I really fucking love, like in my bones love. Um, and I mentioned before being like devoutly pro slut. What I mean by that is not only do I love being a slut, but I love making someone else proud of their sluttiness and really bringing that out in them. So the more I can control the variables, which is literally the name of the game in, you know, pro domination is I am point of reference for clients is I say, you make the playground and then I'll play in it. So I love that. I tell them, give me your limits, give me exactly what kind of things are on the quote menu. And then once we're there, I'm doing whatever I want. So it's not when I'm advertising or when I'm negotiating a particular session, we're not going, oh, we're going to do at 5.09 some anal and then I'm going to tie you up and then I'm going (laughs) to slap you around and then I'm going to call you pet names X and Y and then slurs X, Y, Z. Never. It's tell me what's off the table, tell me what's on the table. Obviously, I get to refuse certain behaviors as well then within that moment it's a real experience yeah i'm just very lucky that i as well as fucking needing money love my job Um, but it doesn't make me a better worker it doesn't make me a superior worker and it certainly doesn't make me a less morally repugnant worker oh i love that so morally repugnant yes so just to be clear that is my personal situation and that's really great and that allows me to enjoy the scene Ask the person what their boundaries are, what they like, and then you kind of go in there and do your thing. Yes. What are some of the common things that clients are always asking you specifically for? Oh, like 80% pegging. Even at the establishment we worked, which was obviously a like vanilla space, my joke was that I was the hooker that didn't didn't fuck because 80% of the guys who came through who booked me wanted me to fuck them. I can it's vouch for very that. <laughs> fucking normal. If you like it, do it and ask your partners. Don't sneak around. Be proud of it. Be slutty. It's awesome. Do it. So you, like you said, you know, we did work at quite a vanilla place. Mm. Yet you saw quite, mm. you were seen quite as like the kink person there. You know, this is the, what men were coming to see you for specifically. Yeah. Besides pegging, yeah. what else What else we have on the list? So typically it's the majority was of the rest was verbal. So I think the impression is that you're carrying a lot of hardware around. Whoa, 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 whoa. Verbal? Yeah. So it's just using specific words. So uh, calling someone princess or calling someone a toy or a slut or... And then I would say less than 5%, maybe even less than 2% of my bookings are people who want me to hit them till they bruise or um, tie them up or be using some kind of hardware. Uh, Wax is fairly Mm common-ish. Generally, my clients actually just want kind of a non-normative human experience. Yeah, your clients were quite not vanilla, if anything. Yeah. I mean, that's why they came to see you, because you are not vanilla at all. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) I remember Mm -hmm. it was one of the times I was working and you were getting you had a pre-booking mm-hmm. and he'd come in and he was a oh, lovely man, you know, a bit older, kind of a bigger dude. I mean, I mean, everyone's taller than me, so I don't even know why I said <laughs> that. <laughs> he was a tall dude and um, he booked you for a golden shower. Yes. Oh, sorry. I should say that one's probably the second. So it's probably <laughs> pegging and then golden shower. Yeah, um, I was going to say like I just from I remember when that guy came in 
And he seemed so confident that that's what he wanted. And he didn't even, he wasn't even embarrassed to tell me that's what he had booked you for. And I remember you had gone and gotten your, to get your bag or something. You And he was just um, with me doing the payment. Yeah. And I remember, um, you know, we had to ask, would you like a beer or a water? <laughs> And he was just like, I think you're going to need a lot for her. And I just remember looking at him thinking, that's an odd thing to say. <laughs> and then I come back out and then he's and you started discussing extras. And then, you know, he paid and then, you know, you said, oh, it's a golden shower. And I was like, oh, that's what he meant by you needed the water bottles, not him. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I remember so fuck. many bookings were for golden showers. Like you were really popular for that. Yeah, it's really, really common. And I definitely enjoy it from a, like, well, from like a dominance perspective. Yeah. Like it's a marking my territory kind of thing. Fairly pedestrian in my brain. I'm oh sure my God. <laughs> I'm, sure it is, I'm sure it's very kinky for a lot of people. But for me, it's like the equivalent of like coming on someone. Oh my God. No. <laughs> like I do it when I enjoy it. And it's like, it's a thing that like, I don't set aside a time in the middle of the booking to be like, aha, and at 11.03, I will do the peeing on your face. It's like, no, no, we're just going to be fucking around. And then at some point when the urge strikes, I will pee on you when I'm able to. Wow. They're really getting like the whole experience from you. The flip side is I drink water for like three hours before a booking like that because I'm a fucking professional. I mean, I'm really interested to how it worked because I was on the other side of the door. So I wasn't looking at what was happening, but (laughs) I'm assuming you didn't do it on the beds. No. So you would almost always, I mean, at the establishment we were at, there was bathtubs. So I would just put them in the bath because that's much easier than the shower. Mm-hmm. When I'm doing it privately at my house, I actually have a rubber sheet, have puppy pads that I have on the bed because like I said, I literally like my, one of my favorite bookings recently was I was wearing a strap on and was face fucking him and then surprise waterboarded him at the same time as Jesus. making him deep oh. throat me. It was my favorite thing in the world. It was the best. And you know what? And this is I see him you? every two weeks now because oh. he fucking loved that. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> hey, we have fun. I can bet you fucking do. Hey. Freaks and sluts. We're the okay. best in the world. <laughs> My last golden shower inquiry. Yep. Where do you have to pee on them? Like what is the most common place that the guys want you to like do that to them? So for instance, there are people who might want me to threaten that I'm going to piss in their mouth, but there are some people who definitely don't want it. And then there are other people who want that exclusively to pee in their mouth yep have you done that yeah but that's toxic for your body i'm where really really well hydrated so this is another thing oh my god so <laughs> i think a lot of vanilla people when they hear golden showers they're thinking about when i need to pee first thing in the morning and that kind of pee we're talking about three or four hours of constant water okay you're basically drinking water with the emotional thrill of doing something filthy and, and it's very similar to that. Like a lot of the way I do kink is very controlled. Okay, so we're going to go to the next label. Yeah. The one that I actually found the most interesting. And one of the things that I found way more common working in the sex industry than mm. I even realized was that you identify as asexual, was it? Yeah. So how does being asexual work for you specifically and how does that work being asexual and being a sex worker. Yeah, so um, so I am what, so within asexual, like obviously within everything, the spectrum of human experience is vast, um, but broadly asexuals will fall into um, sex repulsed or negative, oh sorry, sex repulsed or averse, um, sex neutral and sex favorable. And what that means is, while still being asexual and that not changing as a thing, are you willing to do the act of sex? Like how willing on this spectrum? So you're sex repulsed or you're sex um, averse, sorry. Um, Asexuals are physically repulsed by the concept. They couldn't make their bodies do it. I mean, they probably could, but they wouldn't be able to feel okay within their own bodies Mm -hmm. doing the act of sex. A sex neutral person is capable of doing it, but derives no pleasure. A sex favorable asexual might have reasons or circumstances under which they enjoy the act of sex. That you enjoy it because you enjoy intimacy with your partner. So I sit somewhere between neutral and favorable on the asexual spectrum. If tomorrow 
um, my partners just stopped wanting sex, particularly were still okay hugging me, I would never want, wish for it again. I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't hate it. That, to be clear, I actively enjoy the act of being intimate with my partners. It's just that intimacy for me is just as validly someone washing my hair, giving me a hug, sleeping together, spooning together, as it is me fucking them. So sex, you know, it's not just solely the only intimate act that can happen Yeah, so for it's you. just that it's on an entirely neutral playing field with the other forms of intimacy, because I'm a heavily romantic person. So there are asexuals who are aromantic as well. They actually don't want romance. That's probably more what people are thinking of when they think of asexual is an aromantic asexual, someone who doesn't want Anything. an emotional or deep or physical connection with another person. And that's fucking valid, but that is beyond not what I mean when I say I'm asexual. It means that if you will let me spank you and then we cuddle, that is equally, if not more fulfilling for me because I actually have an orientation and a drive towards kink. Like I physically crave kink in a way I do not physically crave sex. Uh, confusing is that I'm heavily kinky and a lot of people associate kink with sex. And for me, they are not linked at all. Oh, kink and sex are completely different things if you want it to be. Exactly. Um, but because I am so heavily kinky and I'm like neutral to positive sex, uh, it, would, it just wouldn't come up until I don't not want to do the thing. And obviously if I'm working, I'm a service oriented person. I love giving pleasure to people and you're paying me to do a job well. So why would I arbitrarily take this thing off the table that I don't dislike? But if I can link kink in with it, <laughs> then that sex act becomes kinky in and of itself. And I can ha like get real enjoyment from that. So for instance, um, I actually come most reliably from pegging people. Yeah. So you come more from pegging dudes? Yeah. Anyone, but yes. Yeah. The act of both that like... I'm going to say benign violation because I don't actually think they're like dirty or wrong acts, but like the act of someone willing to engage in like non-gender normative behavior and like kind of do a little fucked up kinky thing for slash with me, very hot, very cool. Plus the act of like the physical stimulation of wearing the strap and the visuals putting someone in that position just overloads my brain. And it's one of the few ways I can actually reliably come. As an asexual, <laughs> even within romantic and loving relationships, someone just going down on me, almost un like it's almost completely unlikely to make me come. Wow. So you really are kink based. Yeah. Very, very kinky. I yeah. mean, you're sitting at my dining table in full latex. I can't <laughs> expect any more, can I? Exactly. Um, you know, we went through some of the labels before, mm. like the things that you can kind of tick off. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, your sex work and, you know, you being asexual and such. Mm. What do you think are some of the benefits of being a kinkster and, uh, you know, being asexual in this industry compared to, you know, someone who might be a little bit more of a vanilla worker? I don't want to speak to how other workers feel about that because I'm sure there are situations where they have the same thing where they're like, oh, I'm just doing a job. I just like it. You know, it's just me cutting someone's hair and I'm sure they have a similar thing. I think maybe it's easier for me to access that headspace as an asexual because I have no emotional attachment to the act of sex, like no special emotional attachment. Like it's not a particularly connective thing above say hugging. So it's to you, it's just any other job. Yeah. And it's just any other act. Hmm. Well, so fine. in the same way that like, if I hated someone, I probably don't want to give them a foot rub. <laughs> Fair. I equally no, no. don't Fair want enough. their dick in me. But if I, if I feel neutral about someone, I'm probably fine giving them both a foot rub and having their dick inside me. Like it's, that's what I mean. So we have a lot of questions. A lot of people are interested in finding out more about the fact that you're a dom, that you're, you know, yeah. asexual, all round bad bitch. Like we'll get <laughs> through it. So the first question is, how do you prepare yourself for a dominatrix session? Um, so I actually usually at least days in advance, if not weeks in advance, have kind of a little game plan because of that playground thing that I was talking about. Like I fucking love just building the perfect scenario. Um, physically the day of, I make sure I pack my bags ahead of time. That's the autism ADHD thing because otherwise I will fucking forget something. 
Um, but the main thing that is effortful for a DOM session is just the time spent in the days leading up to that booking, kind of planning out exactly how I would run the session, run the session, basically like fun little things I could try out with that person or like how I could introduce something in a way that they're going to feel safe saying no to Mm -hmm. is, is the main thing, especially if someone is new, trying to figure out ways to introduce what they've asked for that leaves room for both a yes and a no. Next we have, how did you choose to be a dom? I'm going to add on to that. How did you get into being a dom? Oh, I'm kinky. Oh my God. (laughs) So you were just like kinky and thought, I may as well fucking get paid for it. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. So I'm kinky. um, And then in the last three years have become um, increasingly, so I was chronically ill for a while and now I very firmly identify with disabled because I have about a 50 to 60 percent if I'm lucky kind of like I have basically I have about three useful days out of the week okay um so I have to make my entire week's money in that time um because the rest of the time my body will not listen I did a job that I was already good at then I was like teaching my mates how to do certain things or being willing to kind of give people tips or being willing to like introduce people to like um, at local kink events and whatnot. I was very happy to be their local um, like dungeon master, blah, blah, blah type thing. And my joke is that (laughs) if we had universal basic income, baby, I would do this for free. Like, I love this. You really do, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So next we have, do you have any dom tricks? basically what that question may have been asking about, um, which isn't so much my focus when I'm talking about dom tricks is like physical acts and like how to do things properly. And the fact of the matter is there's no one way to do things properly. Each individual body you encounter, and I do this professionally, I encounter lots of different bodies, reacts to different stimulus in different ways, reacts to the same toys at different, in like during different sessions in different ways. Um, depending on mood, depending on the specific words being used, like trial different pet names, trial different ways of saying those pet names, be willing to explore because that's what's going to get you access to that like real head melting ego fucking trip moment if you are a dominant like me that like gets a lot out of just turning someone into just nerve fibers and mush brain (laughs) getting to that moment is almost always about talking figuring out what they individually respond to there's no quick tricks so if someone wanted to learn more about you know bdsm you know where they can get more information or even just things about kinks and fetishes where would someone start um you definitely start like start with a google search for sure um Definitely just don't finish there because your real education is going to be interpersonal. Um, If you can, if there are local like Skillshare groups, that's what I recommend over like, uh, you know, swingers slash swingers club slash play parties to start with, like definitely go to them. They're fucking awesome, but they're not the place to learn how to do things. You want things where the kink itself is separated from a sexual or emotional or egocentric action so if you can go to skillshares if you can look online as well because there's some really great lessons there's a couple that are in fucking america that i buy tickets to their kink like specific kink um skillshares because i just like seeing that diversity of experience and people who don't necessarily have the same skill set as me because there's always something that you'll be able to learn the only thing you need to make sure you start doing before you like practice on a person i guess is learn which things are actively dangerous. And your best bet there is that's the Google bit. So that's if you just type whatever you're curious, rope, things to avoid, or spanking, things to avoid, or blah, 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 whatever. Then obviously you know what to avoid as a baseline. And from that point, just explore and see what's fun. As a kink person, Mm. someone who's clearly a very big ambassador for kinky things, how would you, I mean, what would you tell someone who might be a little shy exploring kinks whether it's within their partners or whether it's just within themselves i think it's complicated the easy answer is of course give it a shot just try there's actually nothing wrong like with like i said most people are terrified to disclose to me oh i would like you to peg me or i would like you to pee on me and that is the most common thing people ask for 
I it's guarantee so your mates also want la- that thing and they're just aff- it's just not normal to like say that you like that thing. But even if the thing that you're into is genuinely rare, which a lot of kinks are not actually as rare as people think they are. They feel very alone, but that's actually usually not the case and it's just about stigma and not feeling safe to disclose, so then your mates also don't feel safe to ex- disclose, etc. Join groups, lurk, lurk and read be online. Try not to feel afraid to ask stupid questions. What is the kink scene like in Perth? Complicated. <laughs> because we're weirdly spread out. There's like a lot here, but it's like... It's a lot, but it's, an, it's, it's not. It's little pods. So it's like once you're in, you have access to so much kink. And when you're on the outside, you have access to almost none. It's once again that we kind of have a conservative but large community. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, my only advice for like how to quote get in is you do the community based stuff because then eventually you'll probably get invited to one of those things. And then that has this big flow on effect of then once you're invited to one thing, you're usually invited to all the things. That's true. I mean, there are a lot of different, like you said, swingers parties, Mm. sex play events where you can just start. You can just go in. There'll probably most likely be a lot of people like you yeah. who are more than happy to talk to people. And, you know, I we always talk about communication mm. on the show. And I think even communicating that you are a little bit more kinky, yeah, you'll open your door to so many more people just like you. Yeah, honestly, biggest advice I can give is if you feel safe to do so, if you are safe to do so, because let's acknowledge that there are some real world effects that can happen and I'm not saying that like everyone should be like me and just go out there you know go on I like to put things in butts but (laughs) if you are safe to do so for the love of god please say that you are that thing and I promise you people will come to you I am actually a part of no local specific scene and I am constantly like I have access to things as soon as I kind of look into them that there's this massive breadth of what a kink scene or the kink scene or kink in general actually looks like And you need to find which version of it you like best. And the only way you're really going to find that is by trialing it. Well, it's been really, really nice talking to you. It's been something that has been in the works for a very long time. Because like I said, months and months ago when we met and when I was a pimp and I met you (laughs) and I was like, hey, what's your name? And you were like, hey, I'm Mercy. I'm a dom and I'm asexual and I'm this and I'm that. And I'm like, what the fuck? My brain was like, (laughs) I was like, fuck yeah, I need to get her on. So it's been really nice having you on. I'm so grateful that you're so open, not even just with, you know, what you do for a living and, you know, the kinks that you have in your personal life, but not a lot of people like to show their face. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And I just love how open you are about this. And these are the kind of things that are going to break that stigma on slut shaming, Mm. making it more normal, making it real, like, you know, making people realize that you're not a drug addict. You're not, you didn't come from a bad home. Your dad didn't run away. Not, this is not why you're doing these things. You know, I'm really glad that you, you know, are so willing to be open with us about this. Oh my God. Honestly, I like, I, I fucking love this podcast first and foremost, but I so heartily agree with the concept of why it exists to be sweet, loud, Mm -hmm. untamed and tardy. Like I love it. It's my, that grinning, enthusiastic sluttiness is my happy place. And for you to already be creating that space and for me to be able to come in and share just for a moment of that feels really on it. Like I'm on it. I am. Whether it's book you, talk to you, follow your content, content, where can they find you? So I'm redoing all of my friggin' websites at the moment. So you can take a gamble on whether I've actually been organized enough to set them up and just search Mistress Mercy, M X T R E S S M E R C Y. And we will um, put that in our social media yeah. as well. Message me on Twitter or Instagram because I'm I'm a real person. <laughs> you can just <laughs> message me through those services and access me the same as if you were clicking on an ad. I also just share a bunch of nudes and I'm fucking hot. So you're welcome even if you don't want to. We were actually me. discussing this before that you have a public Instagram. Yeah, you post I like I've seen pictures of a vagina on there and you still want banned off his Instagram. Yeah, because I love my pubes. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not banned. Um, I mean, I'm gl- grateful you're not banned. I'm kind of annoyed you're not banned because we get banned all the time. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, I'm not, I don't even post my nipples to be sex. My least sexy photos usually have my nipples because it's usually when I'm like, fuck you, you don't get to look at this. 
and I'm actually being titillating that mm-hmm. I'm not showing my nipples. The photos that have my nipples in them are usually just me hanging out in the sunshine, being a gremlin and living my life. It's been really nice having you on and we'll definitely put your socials in there uh, so people can follow you. And um, like I said, been really, really nice having you on and we'll definitely have you on again. Oh, definitely. Can't wait for season two. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed tuning into Project Slut. Stay safe, stay whorish, and we'll see you soon.